I'm dead already. <laughs> All right. Welcome, everybody. We are now live. Welcome to the ECBRO Discovery News Broadcast. Uh, today we got guest Mitchell Waite with us from Arizona. Uh, he's part of, uh, he's the head and, uh, and founder of the Mongolian Monster Project. Uh, it's uh, great to have you here, uh, Mitchell. And uh, you got some fans here on board watching you. Um, well, I didn't know quite where to start with, uh, you know, I think first of all is, uh, let's uh, start off basic, uh, how long have you been involved with uh, Bigfoot Research and what got you started in it? I can't uh oh, uh, we lost audio again, Mitchell. We can't hear you. <laughs> All right. Somehow your audio went out. Hold on. We can't can't hear you, Mitchell. I thought we had him loud and clear there. He did. Uh, hold on. Testing, testing. Yeah, all right. There you go. You keep going in and out. I don't know. We hear you loud and clear now. So. I think it's when he leans forward you can hear him. Yeah, it might be a loose wire or something. I don't know. <laughs> all right. You still got audio? Nope. He's talking. I see the lips moving, but no audio. Come lean forward. Not hearing them. Uh. <laughs> yeah, right now for anyone uh for the one uh for the viewers watching right now, just stand by. We're having technical difficulties with audio. Uh hopefully we'll pull through this here shortly. In testing, in testing. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right, whatever you're doing, try to keep it there. <laughs> I hear you real good. Testing, testing. Okay. Yep. Yeah, Ten four. Well, while you got audio, let's uh let's go ahead and try to take it away, uh, Mitchell, and uh um go ahead uh let's go ahead and get into the discussion how you got started and involved with my own uh, Moss project. Oh no! Oh no! I hear you. I see you talking, but don't get audio. I think when he leans forward, he's touching something that's causing him to go in now. Hmm. Don't go on this computer. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. No, not hearing nothing, Mitchell. Sorry. Hmm. My question is, what is the Mongolian monster? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Oh, hold on. He's. I think he's writing us a note. Stand by for the note, everyone. <laughs> Uh, signing on. Di oh, okay. He's gonna sign on a different computer. All right. Not a problem, Mitchell. Go ahead, do what you gotta do, and uh, we're still live. We'll be here. You still have the same link. Uh, we'll go in some uh, little uh, some discussion while you're while you do that. Uh, so. Uh, <sighs> yeah, my right. question is, my question is, is the Mongolian monster? All right. Yeah, that's good. Uh, if you guys could gather some questions together. Uh, you know, so I, I try to get you guys, some some of you guys familiar with his work and, and everything. Know, I know Cliff was watching some of his uh, movies today. Yeah, yeah, I watched one of his latest ones for the May twenty fourth or 20, no twenty fifth one, right? 
Well, uh, the Mongolian monster is supposed to be a form of a squatch. Right. Because I remember him having some videos where he was had two cameras facing each other. Mm -hmm. It was like a couple of years ago he had them like that. And he was saying something about uh, something was tripping. It was the same way it happened to you that happened to me and you that one night something tripped the cameras. Right. But, but it didn't show anything. Mitchell has done a lot of videos. Yeah. I've been following him for a long time. How long is that, Kimmy? Somewhere between one and three years. Yeah, that's about me too, I guess, you know. Me, I just catch him, you know, <clears throat> when he's got a video up, I'll catch out or something like that. But I remember on his YouTube, he had one particular one that caught my eye. Uh, it was some that tripped two game cameras in the daytime. All right. Um, Kimmy, did you, did you have, well, when we get Mitchell back and everything, we're just, you know, uh, we're still live right now, and we are waiting on Mitchell. So did you have anything in mind that you might want to share and talk with uh, Mitchell about? He said I've been a big fan of his and followed him for quite a long time, and I enjoy his work. I'd like to know how his uh, trailer camp is set up. That's good um, What's that? The, uh, what was that, the floor camera? Well, he has a uh, night vision. I'm, I'm not sure if he has uh, the thermal or the heat thermal. Oh, uh, uh, okay, okay. Is that his newest right. one you come out with? Or something's over on the right-hand corner. You see white popping out and back in. That's one. Well, no. At, the, at one time, he was he was talking about his camper, and he was talking about how he had his camera set up on it. Uh, yeah, he had equipment on the outside. He, yeah, of he's got night vision uh, that works from the outside of his camper, so he can be on the inside. Uh, just basically stuff like that. I just like to know how he he sets it up and, and stuff like that. And I don't know if he's got a wood stove in there, but, you know, if you're, you're going to do this, it would be good to have a, a four-season damper or something. Even a Pokemon, which I, that's what it did, if he had. I like the video where he had the um, little camper. It looked like a little box. Um, looked like it went on the back of a truck or something. And they set it up. On boards. And hey, how do you spell last name? W a i t e. Yeah, w yeah. W a i t e. Okay. Yeah, they left the camper and they came back and it was rolled over. Do you remember that one, Cliff? You got more from two What's years ago so called a Mitchell's monster. Where Mitchell yeah. had set up camper and they came back. The next day, and it had been flipped over on its side. Yeah, mm -hmm. that may have been the very first one I saw from that area around the Mongolian Rim, named yeah, after that uh, Spanish governor. Yeah, yeah. are you guys familiar? Yeah, what's that, Freddie? Hey, how, how about this one? Uh, how good can uh, Bigfoot hide? Darn good. I'm looking at a 46 <laughs> second video of you. Hmm. I'm asking that. Yeah, are you guys also familiar with the one, uh, the video blog that he did in regards to he was sitting in his camper and he had the voices outside and they yep. they were, yeah. they were uh, so, sound like they were possibly a different language and then he uh, he also yeah. mentioned in the video that he thought they were possibly poor people, a place where like <laughs> these homeless people come to hang out and meet up at. Yeah, that, I found that one very interesting. I like to ask him about that one and what all he came out with that. You know, if you made any more of that or not, you know. Kind of sounded like the Rick Dyer video in a home camp. Yeah, he was a. Uh, yeah, he had some really good stuff there. All right, let me go check on him and here on over on Facebook, see what he's doing. I. 
Yeah, because I don't play out my money situation. Because as soon as I can get that, as soon as I get that Jeep back on the road, I got to, I got to get me a uh, nighttime camera. You know, something like what y'all got, except a little. Yeah. Uh, well, the one I'm gonna get. Uh, I've talked to a lot of people, a lot of hunter friends of mine out west, and they and they they're using this one certain one, and they can see out to two hundred yards with. Oh wow! First night in the day, but it's about like three hundred dollars for. It. Yeah, oh, there's wow. one for about four hundred and seventeen dollars that'll take a picture. Yeah, if you go on Sportsman's Guide and push night vision, it'll give you three pages everywhere from ninety five. Seventy-five dollars, all the way up to half million dollar cameras, night vision cameras. Mm -hmm. Sportsman Guide had a good selection. Yeah, and the thing about it is, when you're a member, you get a thirty percent discount. That much? Yeah, I, I got knew it was part. pretty good. I also saw that Cabela's had a decent selection. But I found Amazon the best place to read the descriptions of all of them. That's what we like is Amazon. Yeah. Uh, just uh, chatting with uh, Tracy. He is trying to get on here, and his device that his device that he normally tries so is not compatible. It's he normally gets on here with that same device or whatever he's using, but he's having trouble right now himself. So Mitchell Wayne is the only one having trouble. <laughs> After effects of the thirteen. Yeah. Man, it's crazy. Um yeah, I guess what Mitchell Wade is doing, he like I guess he's trying to hold a different computer, so hopefully hey, that might about, fix the problem. Tell me about Summer. What is she what kind of researcher is she? I know she got her and uh, some other young kids. Yeah. Uh well Summer, she's actually part of the Crypto's uh, Crypto Four Corners, and she's out of Las Vegas, Nevada. So uh, um, I've been, I've been she, talking to her. Yeah, she deals with a little bit of you know, you know, because they're crypto. They're not just uh, mainly Bigfoot. I mean, they deal deal with Bigfoot, but you know, they they're like the group of cryptozoologists. They deal with different you know species and stuff out there. So right, now what about your uh, younger boy? Um. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The young boy. Uh, his name is River Gibbs. He's a very interesting young fellow. He's very. He seems very smart. Very intelligent. Uh, he got some pretty good research. He is actually out of. Uh, I want to say Kentucky. I could be wrong. Kentucky or something. But uh, I think he's currently out in California right now, visiting with his father. So. But, uh, I'll tell you what. Here in the last cut here in the last week or so, Kentucky has been hitting us some hot shit out there lately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have a they have a site. I see a video of a Bigfoot sighting uh, of the Kentucky area somewhere in there. Um, I've seen a few different uh, Bigfoot sighting videos and other blogs. So, I don't know, there's been some stuff going on lately. So. Well, I'll tell you, because right now my area is hot. I mean, it's hotter than it's ever been in the past couple of years, and I know your area is getting hot. Hmm. Because the, yeah. the juvies are getting, the juvies are getting older, and right. they're getting more rambunctious. Yeah, there's a couple areas. Well, one in general, I really want to maybe need return to back to. I still need to get you up to Stanton Dam. That's about two miles on the other side of Oakhorn. Yeah. So once we get you up there, we can go to the back, and you can see where the squashes come in, where the stream feeds into the back of the reservoir. Right. Over to the right, over to the left, you see like a 45 to 60 foot granite wall, and they like to stand on top of there and chuck rocks at you and hide. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll tell you one area that we need to get up to, though, is that, uh, yeah, get up, yeah, get up to the uh, back of the Stanton Dam, which uh, actually me and Cliff, we actually were. You know, well, well, we were actually were almost over in that area. Nah, y'all was, no, nah, y'all was over behind Elkhorn. Yeah, we were down behind Elkhorn with a river, with a river goes back down around a corner, around a curve back there. Yeah, if, yeah. You, if you if you go to the top of that at Burham back there at the back, mm -hmm. and you make, you walk two miles straight in. Mm -hmm. 
you will come to the face of the reservoir. The reservoir is like 85 foot high at the, on the bottom to the top. Yeah. And it's like about 85, 90 foot deep right there. It's deep as 10. It's a huge lake that's just like blocked off and like you took a set of bands of stream that come through it. What you did right. was they blocked it off and, and that whole area filled up. There's cats in there. There's catfish in there big, bigger than I am. Uh, that's the stories I've heard of that area. <laughs> Plus, there's been a lot of people coming up missing up in that area, too. Yep. Not Do just tell. Not just from swimming, either. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to give a brief update for... Because uh, sometimes I see new viewers pop in on the bottom. It lets me know a uh, viewer... Uh, right now we are actually currently waiting on Mitchell Wait. Uh, he was on a little, uh, a real brief. Uh, he's actually having audio difficulties right now, so he is working on getting to another computer right now as we speak. Uh, so please stand by. Uh, we're just having uh, some discussions right now, and, and uh, hopefully he will be back very soon to talk about the Mongolian monster project. Uh, so, and then hopefully we can learn something from him. Uh, uh, but, um, hey, Cliff, about you? Have you been out recently? No, I've been busy. Yeah. Busy at work, and uh, I've been reviewing some audio tape, and I'm starting to put it under SoundCloud. Right. Under Curricula Zoo. I have uh, about five there, which I think I shared two or three with y'all on Facebook. Yeah, I did not know that you actually had a complete audio of like um, of our the whole five minutes. Yeah, yeah, you got you had a, a awesome. yeah that was real good. I didn't know you had picked up all that. You know, I was actually kind of glad to hear all that one. <laughs> that was well, good. I it three times in the last two days, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> I tell you, I tell you what. From what I heard, listen to that audio. I hear two bright, crisp, clear, whoop, two of them, just as clear as a bell. Now that is mm. good audio pickup right there. I was impressed. I didn't think it was that good, but it picked up things real clear, like you said. That I didn't even hear. Hmm. Well, I, I mean. I listened to it, and it's, it was just, I mean, you could hear people talking, and you could hear the whoop in the background. It's like someone's talking, and you hear a whoop. And about a second later, you hear whoop. It's like, I'm like, yep. I, I, have have a good, so. I knew what y'all was going to have up there. Mm -hmm. I, just right, think it'd be that, I, didn't just, I didn't think it'd be that quick, though. All right, hold on. I'll be right back, guys. I'm stand by. Yeah, so I, I knew listened was, to yeah, about. I knew there, huh? Go ahead. No, I knew there were squatches up there because I've seen them up in there. I've heard them up in there, but I didn't think that they would come that come that in that quick. Usually, it's about one thirty to two o'clock when they start showing up there. So I well, guess we had our lead oh, caller oh, working on that. Oh, I know why they showed up. <laughs> Y'all had a girl with you. <laughs> he heard the, he heard him snick heard her snicker. <laughs> They're like, ooh, I smell a female. <laughs> Master work. I believe both of these juvies I got are girls. Oh wow. Because that one that I tried to zoom in was on my tree knocking videos and crypto turned me on to it. And I was talking to the girl and I said, if you listen, when I walk around that corner, you'll hear a She said, yeah, what is that? And I said, that's a juvenile. That's a juvie. But the one that she caught was the brown one with the black face. And with mine, with my, the, the software I got, I ordered the same kind of software that M.K. Davis has got. You can pick up the eyes and the mouth and the face feature, which is black, but the eyes and the mouth are blacker. And you can see the hair, which is 
tan. Well, you gotta look at it. I got it on YouTube. It's like eight second shot, you know. But well, that's All the right. best I can. That's the best I can clear it up. You know. I have a, a message here from uh, Mitchell. Uh, right now, uh, the message says, uh, "Sorry, folks, the problem seems to be on my side." Uh, he uh, has gone to the new computer to sign in, but it has to load up the Google software. So he's going to be a few more minutes on this. So. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, he's just giving us an update right now. So. We'll catch up. Yeah. But once we get him on, it's going to be awesome. I can't wait to hear what he has to say. I hope he gets the audio issues fixed. Yeah. I know a lot of people want to hear him. He's got a lot of fans out there. So, yeah. I want to hear him. He's been doing it, what, 30 yeah. some years plus? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, he's a well experienced uh, seasoned track, uh, you know, Bigfoot researcher. So, yeah. That's about as long as you've been at it, isn't it, Freddie? Huh? That's about as long as you've been at it, isn't it? Yeah, give or take. I've been at it since uh, 81. Yeah. Oh, I got this uh, link. Someone sent me a link from this chick out in California. They mm. need trackers and people who know about squatches to uh, go to Alaska. And, uh, oh, really? There's like a six show, uh, six thing, uh, six series show. And I asked how much it was. It was $2,000 a day. Per episode. Oh wow! Wow, that's pretty good. I heard Bigfoot in Alaska is aggressive. Huh? Bigfoot in Alaska? I heard, I heard that Bigfoot in Alaska are aggressive. Yeah, they are. They're aggressive down in down in uh, Florida too, from the uh. Well, uh, when I lived down on the Seminole Reservation, I lived on a Seminole Reservation in Florida. I lived on the Pamunkey Reservation up here in Virginia. And believe it or not, <laughs> both both groups have got ancient stories on Bigfoot. Down in Florida, Florida Bigfoot Skunk Ape, and up here around West Point, Virginia, you know where that's at, Cliff? Williamsburg, Fort Eustis. Yeah. Okay, Down you know West Point, Chesapeake. Uh, no, West Point's right on the other side of uh, Richmond, right there between Richmond and Williamsburg. Oh, uh, I got you. Because I, I was born in Williamsburg. I was born in Fort Eustis military base. Hmm. But the little town of West Point, you go into it, you go over to James River. You go about five blocks straight through town, and you go over to the Pamunkey River. Well, I lived on a Pamunkey Reservation down there. And between the Seminoles and the Pamunkeys, they've got some very, very, very interesting stories on Sasquatch. Hmm. I always find each one interesting because they add a little piece of this yep. or that. Well, this is... The uh, Pamunkey Indians tribes, they say the South, they say every time they see a Sasquatch, it's in the Pamunkey River uh, gathering clams. And they swim. That comes from Pamunkey. The Seminoles are almost the same way. But theirs is in the swamp. And hmm. but like, like I say, every every Indian tribe in the United States has got a story on Bigfoot. Absolutely. Either carved on a wall in their ancient stories, everything. Even the even the tr Indian tribe that runs through my bloodline, they actually have their own story too, which is very interesting. Is your tribe the uh, your 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 tribe so it got French in it, doesn't it? French, they speak French. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't know if they're French, but uh, they're Quite actually uh, from out of Canada. Yeah, they're from out of Canada and um, Canada they're and French. in the Maine. Where they're called the Micmac Indian tribe. Their language is called the Micmac oh. language. Yeah. yeah, that is French. Yeah, M I C M A M A C. Yep. Or M A. Some of it's pronounced uh, M-A-Q. Uh, yeah, M-A-Q. So. That's French. 
I have some Cherokee ancestors. Yeah. Now they now they do have a. Uh, I mean, it it is a language that's not quite French, but it sounds like a, you know like a Native American because uh, they actually originated to North America here. So. I am Iroquois and Crow. That's awesome. what I call from Iroquois. What? <laughs> I'll say that's where your mouth comes from, the turquoise. <laughs> <That's that attitude. laughs> you found it out, Freddy. Huh? I said you found it out. Uh oh. Let's go take pictures again. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, hold on one second. Yeah, I'm gonna spend the rest of this week uh tearing the Jeep apart. Then uh Friday evening I'm gonna pull the motor and take it down next weekend, switch everything over, then come back up and try to have everything put back in by Monday. But it's gonna take me three weeks to get the thing going because I gotta hook the uh all the hoses up. The wiring is gonna be the problem for me. Oh, well, that's good. Cause I got the I got two wires on mine that's got the uh, tack and the power and I don't know which one's power I don't know whether you use the wires off the off the old distributors or the or do the wire on it I don't know I'm not a wire person I'm as dumb as a box of rocks when it comes to that anything else I can do a wire and forget it <laughs> I'm just a plain old backyard mechanic man I'm a redneck mechanic. <laughs> The best, Never took a class in my life. It's just uh, learning how to touch your parts and know where they go. Well, I did it like this. I touched two wires together and they arc. That was good enough for me. <laughs> well, I got it. I got. I got it set to once you get fuel in the carburetor, he'll fire up on the first look. I'm just hoping I got a hose hooked up right. As long as I get the vacuum, everything hooked up, I'm pretty good to go. What are you doing? Okay, I'm back. Can anybody All hear me? Right. Clear. Yeah, we can hear you. Yes, sir. Good to have you. Glad it's all taken care of. <laughs> hey, yeah, it makes a whole <laughs> world of difference now. All right. Ah, uh, how you doing, Mitchell? <laughs> uh oh, oh I'm a little better now. Uh oh, uh oh, where'd you go, Mitchell? Uh, all right, there Ooh. we go. Yeah, we're excited to have you on board, man. It it really is excitement, though. Yeah, we're we're looking forward to this. Can anybody hear me now? Okay. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's go ahead and uh, get started with you, Mitchell. Yeah, yeah we hear you. Yeah, do you hear us? Sit down and yes, very good. And Mitchell, do you hear me? Yes. All right, great, great, great. All right. Well, right now, um, I know a couple of the, uh, a couple of the, you know um, members on board here have some questions, but I thought we would go ahead and start off with you. Uh, if you want to go ahead and get into a, you know, if you want to share a discussion on how you got started with uh, the Mongolian monster. Uh, actually, uh, I know one of our questions were um, from Freddy. What is the Mongolian monster? And also, how long or when did you get started in this? So I'm going to let you take it away from here, and then uh, I'm sure we'll have some questions as we get further into it. So, Okay. The, the name... Mo Mogion Monster actually comes from the Boy Scouts of Camp Geronimo. It's kind of like the name uh, Grassman or Skunk Ape or uh, Bigfoot or whatever. It's just another name, but it's the same creature. Okay. Um, basic, basically what happened was uh, Camp Geronimo back in the early 19... or, yeah, early 19... 1950s, late 1940s, um, 
their camp got attacked by a Bigfoot, and it t tore up the camp. It did. It, hurt. Uh, it upset everybody so much and the parents so much that they closed Camp Geronimo. And five miles to the east. And over the, uh, well, the name Mogion Monster actually came from them, uh, the mm. Boy Scouts, because so that's how I got named. Named. Now, oh, okay. ah. as far as uh, me getting started, well, can you uh, tell my me, ancestors uh, um, it's kind of settled. Yeah, go. All right, come back on that. You're breaking up a little bit. <laughs> right. Ted, Hansek in the early territorial days. Oh, uh, I think he was waiting uh, they for your They were part uh, of the early pioneers right? that came into northern Arizona. Um, okay, my... Yeah. Fred, are you got a question? My ancestor settled northern Arizona. Yeah. Uh, um, what exactly they is the They were basically the it's early pioneers. It's just a Sasquatch with the name. Yes, it's just okay. a different uh, name for Sasquatch. Hmm. And um, they were they were oh, pretty okay. active uh, in Arizona. And uh, uh, all of the early pioneers knew about him. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Um, they were called uh, the Hairy Man. Okay. And, All right, right now your, your um, audio is going wild in, man. in and out right now. That was... Hmm. Okay, any better? Or maybe I just need to move closer to the audio. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> Yeah, that yeah, that might help a little bit. <laughs> yeah, sound that I can bring up. All right. There's cancel. Anyway, I'll talk. My ancestors, they were the ones that settled northern Arizona. They ran into the Mogollon monster. Uh, when they ran into him, uh, they had stories about him. And uh, some of the stories, the stories to keep the kids scared. Things or the um, okay, is that any better? Yeah, I've been hearing you good. Anyway, uh, as they the kids, I grew up, uh, Mitchell. I, I okay, got. I grew up knowing yeah, or hearing these stories about. Anyway, I, I grew up hearing all these stories from my early ancestors about the Mogollon monster, and um, so I, I didn't really believe it. I was a non-believer until about eight years ago, and um, we, we kind of compiled all these uh, stories from my aunts and uncles and great 
grandfathers and stuff and put it in a book. Once we put it in a book, people started contacting us wanting to tell us their story. Well, we heard one story that just recently happened, so we decided to go check it out. We went up to check it out, and we spent the night. During the middle of the night, something came in and squashed the tent down on us. Uh, that scared us pretty bad, so we left the area that night. Uh, we came back later on, and we found a 19-inch footprint about 30 feet from our tent. Oh, wow. That's so big. that's kind of what got me started. Well, how tall do you think? So the, I've been uh, chasing them ever since. With the 19-inch footprint, how tall do you think it is? Uh, probably between the 8 and 9-foot range. It was uh, tall enough to be able to reach over a, a full dome tent and push down on the top of it to crush it down on top of us. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Hmm. Now, I got a question. You know, with what with what you were saying, how, you know, with the stories that they get, you know, gave to keep the children scared to keep them close to the home, um, is there any... Uh, Legend or any uh, anything stated that they that the legend of their Bigfoot might have been uh, perhaps cannibalistic in any way because uh, I know some tribes actually uh, um, some Native American tribes do give a story um, of their legend of Bigfoot being a known uh, cannibalistic uh, female being. Or hairy giant, a large hairy female giant that was cannibalistic that would eat children or other Indians. For example, I know uh, there's a couple of tribes up in uh, Canada that uh, they give that story. I didn't know if maybe the Mogollon monster had any similarities or anything that might have been stated with that. So I was just curious to know if you ever heard or heard of that. By any chance? Yeah. Uh, well, yes, I have. Um, there's been a couple of cases already known here in Arizona where a Bigfoot have attacked people. Uh, it attacked a truck driver back in the early 1950s. Uh, they mm. had stopped along the highway to sleep overnight, and. Um, they had, it attacked them while they were in the truck, and it uh, killed the driver, but it drug his wife off into the bushes, and she was able to escape. Um, and basically, the authorities tried to write that off as a bear attack, but she kept oh. insisting, no, this was a large, hairy man. Hmm. And uh, she stuck to that story all the time. And so they wrote it off as being a recluse uh, hermit that basically was trying to save her from the bear. Oh, wow. But um, that, that wasn't the case. <laughs> um, there's been other cases back in the early history of Bigfoot trying to lure um, some of the townspeople into the thick forest. Um, there's only one reason why I'd want to do that, and that's to get them separated so that basically he could uh, attack one of them. Oh, wow. But that's, this is in an area that's of the air, a new area that I'm researching now. It's, it's an area that I call the Meat Eaters Territory. Yeah, I recently guys, seen your video. Uh, don't Right. Well, it, there's several hot spots here in Arizona, and we have kind of like a unique situation because our forest runs down through the middle of the state, and on the north side of the forest is nothing but desert, high desert, and on the south side is nothing but low desert or Sonoran desert. Mm. 
So we have this band that runs west, and we've had some major forest fires lately, which has kind of cut their uh, their ability to be able to move or migrate or whatever. And it's kind of served to push them into areas where they can survive, kind of concentrate them. Uh, these areas now, I'm look, finding that there's probably two different species, very human looking, has human oh. facial features and very little hair on the face. And uh, however, they're, you know, big, tall, and hairy on the body. The other subspecies, I believe, is over in the meat eaters area, and they're very. Uh, primitive looking. They're what you would really think a Bigfoot would look like, you know, with the cranial dome, uh, you know, the broad flat nose and stuff like that. So, and the reason why I call them the meat eaters is because their diet is mostly meat. There's not enough uh, vegetation to support them. So, there's a difference in locations as far as what food's available. So we got looks like two different species. Yeah, because here in my area in uh in Shenandoah Valley in Virginia, we are like eat up with turkey, deer, coon, coyotes, and stuff like that. So we got plenty of food here. Cause it's like a big solid bubble. We're right off the Blue Ridge Parkway. And there's a variety of everything they could have here. Got uh -huh. uh, laurel thickets, berries, mushrooms, uh, sassafras roots that they could that they uh, eat on. I found I read that for manip, manip, municipal purposes, you can take sassafras and chew on it and get rid of a toothache. So that might be something squatches do too in this area of problem. Maybe yeah, I think the. I do think they have an idea of what, what plants can do for them, uh, certain plants. Um, you know, like you said, to, to get rid of a, a toothache. Or uh, they also, I believe, know about Spanish moss, which will, will treat uh, gangrene or a right. cut or something like that. So. Yeah. Well, from my experience. Yeah, I, I really believe that we're. Go ahead. But from my experiences here in the valley, they are very intelligent. Very intelligent. Everything. And that's, that's something that, because every time I go in. Yeah, extremely. They teach me something new every time I go in. Everything. That's one thing I like about it. That's one thing I like about uh -huh. you know. And out in your area, you say you have desert on one side and... Um, what? Uh, what was that other? You said you had desert on one side. And what was on the other side? Of the, of the, more desert. Of the, uh, forest. More desert. And how wide of an area do y'all have this woods that they live in? Well, like what, two miles wide or something like that? Like a strip? No, it's it's like seventy-five miles wide. It, it varies in thickness. Uh, you know, it extends all the way from Flagstaff all the way to New Mexico, and um, it's it can vary in width from uh, 20, 30 miles to 75 miles or so. It's it's a very big area. Oh, okay. Well, what I'm curious to ask Mitchell is, what has been your experience with eye shine? Uh, I've had some pretty interesting ones. <laughs> um, because on our, mostly on our the, the. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, we saw yellow eye shine. We saw red. And red. Mm hmm. Uh, what 
what type of source of light were was causing? What would you say? Lantern, a flashlight. Um, you know what was causing this, the reflection? Headlamp. We had headlamps. A headlamp. So I think it was a neon bulb. Okay. I, uh, I kind of mm -hmm. think that that might. From what I have seen, whenever there's uh, kind of like a mercury vapor type light, um, whenever they use a mercury vapor type light, it, it's kind of an, a yellowish color. You use infrared and it's white. Um, red lights usually comes from a hard uh, filament type light, you know, straight white light. So, and it could have something to do with what they've been eating. Oh, really? All right, because when I was up there in that area that they had their experience, the one I saw had red eyes. It was like it went to an amber red into red. Yeah. Uh-huh. So we were standing there. We were standing on the road. And he was at the top of the ridge looking at us. It chucked a rock at me. But we really didn't know. But I 